Hey, Shalom, Amakim, Shalom, Kahalo, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakah, Kadash. I want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akim, out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. This is the brother Aliala. And, um, you know, I'm going to start off with the scripture here uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And, you know, with the uh, events that's been going on recently with Afghanistan, we see that um, the Most High is putting together another piece of the algorithm in the area of the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And so I wanted to touch in on that. As we can, as we see here, I'm going to play this clip. There is a, a massive exodus coming out of this place just because the Taliban have taken over this region. But I'll let the news, newscaster speak. Mass exodus is currently underway in Afghanistan, with dramatic pictures coming from the capital, where a huge stampede formed as people tried to leave the city. A fleeing families also stormed the international airport, and we understand at least seven people have been killed. Now, the Taliban's managed to seize control of the entire country two weeks before... <laughs> Look at that map. Um, and so you can see that the Taliban has literally taken over the whole entire country. It's uh, sitting on the, against the Pakistani border. It's just um, ridiculous. For the U.S. is set to complete its troop withdrawal after a costly two-decade war. So all of these soldiers that have gone to um, fight in the war of Afghanistan since the time of 9-11 uh, and everything like that um, literally meant nothing. Literally meant nothing. <laughs> Some unverified footage on social media shows some disturbing pictures as a desperate Afghans, fearing for their lives, attempted to cling to the outside of a U.S. Air Force plane at Kabul airport. Reports say human remains were found in the landing gear of that transport aircraft following its flight from Kabul. Well, pictures have also emerged of those are lucky enough to make it onto an airplane on Sunday, although there they were met with another stampede, this time on board. Now, 640 people were said to have packed inside this particular U.S. jet. And that's as the Pentagon now says it's preparing to accept 22,000 asylum seekers. Boom. And so wherever they accept these people, there's potential for uh, terrorist attacks or the, or the propaganda of a terrorist attack. And wherever these uh, um, different refugees go, it's going to be a place to where it says, wow, we didn't know there was terrorists among these refugees fleeing the country and now you know there's a potential of a large scale you know whether it's a chemical attack or some type of attack in the different places that these people flee to and this is all propaganda and a part of Esau using a, a, a craftiness to basically uh, order out kale you know and they want World War three it's something that we've been documenting here with Great Millstone it's something that's spoken about within the scriptures you know, continually they're, they're, they're bringing these things together. And when you go to the book of Psalms, the 28th chapter, in the first verse, it says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards the holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Okay, and that's what we see, man. They, they, they speak peace to their neighbors, they, but mischief is going on. And there's always been mischief uh, when it comes uh, to, you know, the Middle East and how things have been taken, have, have gone with propaganda in the Middle East. Esau has always been among Ishmael, stirring things, stirring things up. One of the brothers, the brother Barak, from the LA camp, he was talking about Brzezinski, Brzezinski and how he always um, contrived with uh, other officials to s stir things up in the Middle East. You know, and when we go back and listen to this clip, this is a clip of uh, Brzezinski, uh Brzezinski back dealing with the Taliban in, in pa Pakistan, Afghanistan back in 1979. So check this out.
U.S. National Security Advisor Brzezinski flew to Pakistan to set about rallying resistance. He wanted to arm the Mujahideen without revealing America's role. On the Afghan border near the Khyber Pass, he urged the soldiers of God to redouble their efforts. We know of their deep belief in God, and we are confident that their struggle will succeed. That land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day because your fight will prevail and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again because your cause is right and God is on your side. Boom. So, you know, the, these Edomites have always been arming these, uh, you know, Ishmaelites. They've always been, you know, giving them money giving them intel, giving them the things that they needed in order to thrive in this area. So for the United States to come back and try to say this is a terrorist group, it's just hypocritical. And it shows you how they shall speak, say peace and safety, but war is in their hearts. They're the ones who are staring this up. You know, they're, they're just a brief article here by ben, uh, Bill Van Acuen. He said, Brzezina Brzezinski, architect of the catastrophe of Afghanistan, dead at 89. Um, it says, Brzezinski, security advisor to Democratic President Jimmy Carter and longtime proponent of an aggressive strategy for a certain U.S. global hegemony, uh, died. During his four-year tenure in the White in the Carter White House, Brzezinski was involved in a large number of criminal operations carried out by the U.S. imperialism around the globe, from support of the Shah's attempt to drown the Iranian Revolution in blood to the initiation of, of a U.S. policy in Central America that led to bloody counterinsurgency campaigns that claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands. Unquestionably, however, the greatest of these crimes, and one, and one for which he proudly took credit, was the orchestration and support of a dirty war waged by Islamist Mujahideen against the Soviet-backed government of Afghanistan at the end of the 1970s. Born into an aristocratic Polish family that was forced to take refuge in Canada, where blah, 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 is talking about him. And, you know, you can go into this thing right here. Uh, uh, let's say I'll read one more. I'll read one more. It says in early 1970s, Brzezinski was taped by David Rockefeller, was tapped by David Rockefeller to head the Trilateral Commission, a body created to coordinate imperialist strategy between Washington, Western Europe, and Japan. The commission, made up of influential business and political figures, in turn threw its support behind the 1976 presidential uh, campaign of Democrat Jimmy Carter, then governor of uh, Georgia and seen as Washington, as a Washington outsider who could provide a fresh face after the debacle of the administration of Richard Nixon and that of, the, of his successor, uh, Gerald Ford. Members of the commission occupied key posts in the Carter administration with uh, Brzezinski as national security advisor, exercising overwhelming influence over U.S. foreign policy. And so they've been they they've done this stuff over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, it was it was in this position that uh, Brzezinski authorized one of the greatest crimes carried out by the U.S. imperialism in the 20th century, the instigation of a war in Afghanistan that has continued to ravage the country to this day. And so they are behind all this type of stuff, man. Continually, are they gather get together for these types of things? Continually. You know, Psalms 140 and 1 says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent's adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Okay? And this is what they do. And this is what we're seeing right now as we see massive chaos happening over in the Middle East. And it's something that, you know, General Wesley Clark spoke to, you know, now he, he kind of like regrets this little clip that everybody uses. But it highlights the propaganda machine and the war campaigning that Esau does behind the curtains. You know, I'm going to play this clip. Fame, famous clip. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz, I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, "Sir, you gotta come in. You gotta come in and talk to me a second. I said, "Well, you're too busy." He said, "No, no." He says, "We've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq." This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, "We're going to war with Iraq. Why?" He said, 
I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I if the only tool you have is a hammer. Every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk. He picked up a piece of paper. And he said, I just... He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Boom. And so this is what we see. OK, and we see the progression. And now there are more, there's more and more propaganda about uh, the state of Israel attacking Lebanon. We already see what's going on in Syria. They've got the Taliban in a position to create the, the right type of propaganda to go full-fledged war uh, um, out of Afghanistan and, and let that lead into wherever they needed to uh, go into and continue this mission that they, they, they've been wanting to go into, okay? Piece by piece by piece, we see these coming together. And Ishmael was always prophesied to be in the midst of perpetual war, you know, and that's why we understand that the third woe is coming quickly. When you read in the book of uh, Genesis, the 16th chapter, and the um, 11th verse, it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord have heard thy affliction. And Ishmael is the modern-day Arabs. All those people in and around of Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, you know, uh, within, within Syria, you know, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq. You know, a lot of that is uh, Ishmael, you know, Jordan, the, the whole area. It's a whole bunch of Ishmael, even within uh, the state of Israel, okay? And this is what it says in verse 12. It says, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So he's going to be a wild man, you know, <clears throat> and we see that, you know, you have the uh, Shia Muslims, you have the Sunni Muslims, you have the conservative Shia, conservative Sunni, all these different sects, and it's perpetual uh, uh, fighting, warfare that goes all in, inside that region, uh, leading all the way up until today. And everybody's hands against uh, the Ishmaelites, and it's just going to lead to more and more and more conflict. Okay, and so with this whole situation that's going on, you know, America's supposed to be this beacon of hope, protecting everybody, but we get my man, we get my, my man uh, Biden up here, and he's just like, you know what, F all y'all, we ain't doing none of that, you know. Now, you check this out, and you and you see the hypocrisy, because of, because of the perpetual war that the Edomites have, have, have put in the Middle East, it's formulated all types of rebel groups that want freedom, that want to fight back against imperialistic powers. So all the troops that have been sent into the Middle East has created a lot of these super groups, and they've been empowered by the powers that be. They got all their weapons from the United States, Russia, and China. Okay, well, check what he says. Counterterrorism, not counterinsurgency or nation building. That's why I opposed the surge when it was proposed in 2009 when I was vice president. And that's why as president, I'm adamant we focus on the threats we face today in 2021, not yesterday's threats. Today, the terrorist threat has metastasized well beyond Afghanistan. Al-Shabaab in Somalia, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, Al-Nusra in Syria. ISIS attempting to create a caliphate in Syria and Iraq and establishing affiliates in multiple countries in Africa and Asia. These threats warrant our attention and our resources. We conduct effective counterterrorism missions against terrorist groups in multiple countries where we don't have... Boom. 
So now you have a situation where they've created all of these situations and problems that are going on in the Middle East. And now they want to act like, oh, we got to clean this up because it started some magical way. It hasn't started some magical way. It started because you went and stirred the pot amongst uh, Ishmael. And now it's going to come back to bite. You know, we, we see the chickens come home to roost as, as Malcolm X is so famously spoke about uh, the United States concerning how they dealt with people. And and now we're looking for things to further escalate, okay? Further escalation of all of this stuff, okay? Now check this out. Let's see if this will play. You, you can count on about a million Shia from all countries coming in. Oh, yeah, and that's another part uh, of that, is that it, a third Lebanon war, uh, and let's pray to God nothing like oh, that we're, we're at the happens. precipice. We're at the precipice, but that would not only be a war between Israel and Hezbollah or Israel and Lebanon, mm -hmm. it would be a multi-front war. Oh, it totally. would involve... Boom, so now you have the state of Israel where the scripture says the least shall draw them out. The state of Israel is going to be drawing out all of these different factions to come to war in a centralized location. Where is that? The Valley of Jehoshaphat, man. Like the scriptures say. Syria. That's right. It would involve, of course, Hamas in Gaza. It would yes. involve Palestine. It would Islam, inflame Jihad, the entire Middle East. You know, Fatah. It would inflame the entire Middle East. Yeah. So with that, let's let's shift to Iran. Okay, we covered that one. <laughs> 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 So damn funny. But yeah, they're right about that. When you go to 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, in the 20th verse, it says, Behold, a horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Also the Carmanians, the Persians, the Iranians, raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join with them and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And then shall the, dra shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if, the, and, and if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great, uh, in great power to persecute them, then these shall be tr trouble bled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. All right. And so what we're seeing is all of these nations coming together for a, a, a great grand battle, this third world. And it's going to encapsulate the West completely and, and lead to regional conflicts, world conflicts, isolated terror attacks, cyber attacks, famines, uh, a, a supply chain constriction in the midst of a global uh, pandemic. All of these things are coming together for the most high algorithm for ultimate destruction, okay? And so we're going to see how this escalates and what happens with it with the Taliban uh, occupying all of Afghanistan. This is something significant. But what we should uh, also watch out for is when, as these people flee from Afghanistan, how this creates a, a, a propaganda of terrorism in different places where these people are being sent. All of these things are on the table now. Uh, uh, once again, and so it's going to be very, very cool to watch and see how the Most High uh, brings all these things about, man. So not to belabor the point, I just want to do a brief update algo algorithm. Um, I think I'm be able to upload this to uh, Elder Yashawamba's page on Remnant Saved, man. I, I made it to the big leagues. Hey, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, man, Lord willing, that was at a fine call. Hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Kahakudash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yahweh. I'm out there pushing the word sincerely in truth. Please add any comments or, or scriptures that come to mind. I know there's a ton of scriptures that should come to mind. Um, but it, it's going down, baby. Let's, let's, let's get it. Shalom.